Welcome to this video lecture of Live Text Access, training for real-time intralingual subtitlers. This is Unit 4, Entrepreneurship and Service Competence. Element 2, Stress Management and Personal Skills. My name is Julia Borchert and this lecture is about professionalism and the term Code of Conduct. The materials are created by Subti Access and ZDF Digital. This is the learning outcome. The trainee can remain objective, neutral and follow a Code of Conduct in the interaction with end users and customers at work. Here you see the agenda. At first, something about the principles of professionalism. Then we will have a look at the importance of objectivity. And at the end, I will say something about the code of conduct. Principles of professionalism. In summary, this learning outcome includes to act professional in the working environment and to abide by some rules. So what does it mean to be professional? Let's have a look. Both words, professional and professionalism, derive from the Latin term professio, which means confession, commerce or profession. However, Professionalism refers to more than simply a profession. Professionalism, especially in the working environment, is based on the autonomy of the acting people. This autonomy allows independent decisions and unbiased judgments. The autonomy of the people is ensured by guidelines such as professional ethics and codes of conduct which are mostly managed by associations and institutions. A code of conduct provides confidence among customers and employers. In addition, professionalism relies on expertise. This expertise is ensured, among other things, through professional education and training. Furthermore, professionalism is characterized by experience, profound knowledge and the successful application of it. Professionalism is a behavior and this becomes apparent, for example, in the successful management of crisis situations. Imagine following example. An airplane is in the air and turbulence occurs. How should the pilot act now? How much truth can passengers tolerate? How much authenticity? There is a thesis that it often takes less authenticity to prove professionalism. To completely inform passengers now about the current situation and possible dangers, no matter how unlikely they are, would be irresponsible. This example makes clear that professionalism is less about factual knowledge and more about a behavioral norm. Knowing that passengers would panic if the, situations, if the situation were described in detail, a professional pilot announces only the most necessary information and prepares it in such a way that passengers can handle it. This ultimately helps everyone in this situation. Objectivity. In this example of the plane, the pilot acts professional and very carefully. So in the end, this makes it possible for him to handle the problem easier and to solve it. Objectivity in the working environment also means using fair and well-balanced criteria for making decisions. Decisions concerning employees, the interaction with customers or company problems. Objectivity 
aims to eliminate decisions based on personal bias, cultural differences, prejudices, discrimination, partiality, inhibition, and any other criterion that cannot be measured or proven. What is the difference between objectivity and subjectivity? To look at a thing subjectively means to evaluate it personally through one's own feelings, experiences or an instinct. We like something, find someone likable and attractive, but all that is only in the eye of the observer. To judge something objectively, on the other hand, is to attempt a sober, purely factual observation. Only rational arguments, data and facts count. The mind decides, not the heart. Objectivity is not determined by feelings and prejudices, but is factual unbiased and impartial. The primacy effect is the technical term for the usually completely subjective first impression. We decide whether we like the other person or not within a seconds. This assessment is based entirely on the appearance, body language, or the smell of the other person. And once the judgment has been made, everything that comes now is assigned to this judgment. The primacy effect makes it enormously difficult for us to recognize people as they really are. For example, once someone is unappealing, he or she will probably be always unappealing. We ignore the other objectively also existing sides. Where the primacy effect prevails, the Regency effect is not far behind. It forms the companion piece at the end the power of the last impression. Because this last impression remains. For example, a serious faux pas or a stupid line at the end can cause that all the trust and sympathy piled up are gone. Just like the first impression, the last impression continues to shape our judgment of a person for a long time. These two effects are only a selection of examples of subjective perception, which takes place very often. But to remain neutral, it's necessary to be objective, especially for a speech-to-text interpreter. <clears throat> because a speech-to-text interpreter supports the communication between people with and without hearing impairment. Therefore, the inter interpreter has a significant role in the debate on equality in the society. The text interpreter must have a professional attitude towards clients, whereby equality is the starting point. The text interpreter creates in consultation with the client conditions for optimal communication and therefore the best possible work. And with a professional and objective method, it is possible to recognize and eliminate prejudices, which saves us from misjudgments and bias. Code of conduct. A code of conduct is a set of rules outlining the norms, rules and responsibilities or proper practices of an individual party, a company or an organization. 
A code of conduct is intended to serve as a guideline in the professional dealings with business partners. For example, customers, service providers and colleagues. It's necessary and helpful for a respectful interaction with each other. Like I mentioned before, a speech-to-text interpreter has a significant role in the debate on equality. Because of that, especially for this profession, it's important to have an ethical guideline. Therefore, in every country, a code of conduct exists for the work of text interpreters. Here, one example extract of the Code of Conduct for Speech-to-Text Interpreting in Austria. Speech-to-Text Interpreters translate for hearing, hard of hearing and deaf people into written language. They are bound by confidentiality and are committed to impartiality. Guidance, assistance and explanations are not part of speech-to-text interpreters' duties. They do not ask questions on behalf of their clients and their translations remain unbiased. Nor is it their responsibility to fill in forms for their clients. Here one example extract of the Code of Conduct for Speech-to-Text Interpreting in the Netherlands. The text interpreter is neutral in appearance, is no participant to the situation, keeps an appropriate distance to the clients, reacts in a neutral way to the content of the situation, and is aware of the own norms and values and prevents these are of influence to the transcript. Here one last example extract of the Code of Conduct for Speech-to-Text Interpreting in Germany. Text interpreters practice their profession independently, professionally, conscientiously, impartially and secretively. They must be worthy of the respect and trust which the position and task of the interpreters require. Furthermore, they must not jeopardize the reputation of their job description and the profession. This is especially true in the daily practice of the profession, but also in the public statement. Like you can see from these three examples, the codes of conduct are a voluntary commitment to follow or refrain from certain patterns of behavior and to ensure that no one gains an advantage by circumventing these patterns. These guidelines provide security in the work of the interpreter and this for all involved characters. So it's very important to know the respective code of conduct of your country you are working very well and to be aware of all aspects. Summary. Professionalism, especially in the working environment, is based on the autonomy of the acting people. This autonomy allows independent decisions and unbiased judgments. The autonomy of the people is ensured by guidelines, such as professional ethics and codes of conduct. Objectivity in the working environment also means using fair and well-balanced criteria for making decisions. A speech-to-text interpreter must have a professional attitude towards clients whereby equality is the starting point. Because with a professional and objective method, it is possible to recognize and eliminate prejudices. A code of conduct is a set of rules outlining the norms, rules and responsibilities or proper practices of an individual party, a company or an organization. A code of conduct 
Thus, it's important to follow or refrain from certain patterns or behavior and to ensure that no one gains an advantage by circumventing these guidelines. Exercises. The exercises for this video lecture are in the trainer's guide and the PowerPoint file. Thank you for your attention. LTA Live Text Access Universiteit Autonoma de Barcelona SDI Internationale Hochschule Scuola Superiore per Mediatori Linguistici ZDF Digital European Federation of Hard of Hearing People FO Velotype SubT Access European Certification and Qualification Association ECQA Co-funded by the Erasmus Plus Programme of the European Union Erasmus Plus Project 2018-1-DE01-KA203-004214 the information and views set on this presentation are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Union. Neither the European Union institutions and bodies, nor any person acting on their behalf, may be held responsible for the use which may be made of the information contained here.